Hello, many thanks for joining us on Business Week today. Now, the program that brings you top stories that made the business headlines during the course of the week, including special interviews, news features, and much more. Welcome to the show. The highlights of the biggest stories were tracked for you over the course of this week. On Monday, on the local front, Dubai Airline Emirates has suspended uh, passenger flights to and from Nigeria till further notice. Now, the suspension took effect immediately. The announcement came 48 hours after restrictions on direct flights between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates was lifted after a long-standing disagreement between both countries. Nigeria generated 79.96 billion naira from the solid mineral sector in 2019, and this is the highest record in five years. In the currency market now, the economic community of West African states has adopted a new roadmap to launch the eco-currency its proposed single currency in the year 2027. And talking about infrastructure development, President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akil Miyadishina, has assured that $430 million highway project linking Enugu to Bamenda, Cameroon, will be completed this year with the aim of aiding trade opportunities between both countries. And now shifting focus to the international front, Goldman Sachs has launched its transaction bank in Britain expanding the business after launching it in the United States last year. And now in the aviation sector, American Airlines is also set to cancel around 1% of its flights next month to serve a surprise uptick in travel demand as the airline struggles with unprecedented weather and a labor shortage. And talking cryptocurrency, Bitcoin regained some ground a day after touching a two-week low after China's central bank reaffirmed a crackdown on cryptocurrencies and also restricted trade in channels for Chinese residents. Now, the world's largest cryptocurrency was last up 4.58% to hit $33,000, while Ethereum, the second biggest cryptocurrency, was also up 5.05% at $1,983 after hitting a five-week low the day before. The United States and Brazil, the world's top two ethanol producers, are expected to hold down production in the coming months because of the surging cost of corn and sugar. Well, it's now time to bring your special packages by our correspondents. Now in this first report, the federal government insists that the nation's seaport automation process remains a major focus. Now, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, says that the review of concession agreements in the port will be premised on the level of digitization. TVC News correspondent Ifenaya Eze has the details. For dignitaries at this event, recorded developments in the maritime sector cannot be summed without the mention of contributions of the outgoing Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, Hassan Bello. Speakers highlight his policy direction which are responsible for some of the progress that is fueling the current drive for automation and efficiency in the post system. Hazan has been able to do what most of us couldn't do, to bring the providers of shipping services with the consumers of shipping services to level playing ground. There is a magazine in our business. We call it Fair Play Shipping Magazine. Trying to reduce the time cargo stay in the ports, encouraging our automation, making sure all the shipping lines are graded. And um, so you have also the truck transit park. He has introduced a lot of things. It's been a pleasure as a board member of Shippers Council working with him. The Minister of Transportation admits that digitization is the key to driving a competitive port. We are looking at the Apapa Seaport and the Tinkan Seaport in the next few months to see how we can get them to work, uh, to ensure that they are digitalized so they can function efficiently. I say to everybody, if you observe the, the visit of the president, if you observe the visit of the president, suddenly the port was clean, all the vehicles disappeared, there were no gridlock anymore. It means that there's lack of efficiency. For the outgoing executive secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, the maritime sector remains the veritable option for diversification. Our ports must be automated, digitalized. We need non-contact ports. And I'm happy for what has been done. We are now rushing to about 70%. What we need now is um, a kind of port community system 
a portal where there are transparent transactions so that government will not lose revenue. He maintains that if properly harnessed, the sector can effectively finance the national budget. And now in this next report, just six private jet owners have responded to calls by the Nitro Customs Service to verify their import documents within one month or risk sanctions. Now the Customs authorities say that owners of the aircraft still holding back will have themselves to blame after J the July the 7th expiration date for the exercise. Lara Foneo reports. A few weeks ago, the Nigerian Customs gave owners of private jets in the country one month spanning 7th June to 6th July to verify their import and operational documents or risk sanctions. Though importation of private jets into the country does not attract duties, but the Customs says there are some charges payable on such items. The private jet owners are also required to verify five documents with the customs. Just six private jet owners have come forward for verification and others are now asked to do so before the deadline or risk due sanctions. Necessitating this update and reminder to those who have not responded to do so in order to avoid possible detention of their aircraft. The service believes that owners of private aircraft are highly placed individuals who would be willing to comply with extant laws of the land governing importation of the aircraft they own. The Customs also maintains that the action is not with bad intentions, but to ensure due process was followed in making such acquisitions and importation into the country. We are aware that uh, some people brought their aircraft under temporary importation arrangement. Uh, the period for such uh, temporary importation, some of them have since uh, expired. Uh, some of them have neither, they neither, they have neither renewed or re-exported uh, such aircraft in compliance with uh, extant laws governing uh, temporary importation in Nigeria. But um, at the end of the verification, some of the things we are suspecting, some of the things we want to on earth will uh, come to light. The Customs says it will begin the application of sanctions on those who fail to comply with its directive immediately after the deadline. And now with those reports, we delve into the feature of the show today, looking at the energy sector, looking at fuel subsidy regime and the way out of the current uh, situation we have in ground. Details of this conversation and much more is coming up shortly after this break. Thanks for still staying with us. Now let's deal with the crux of today's discourse. The International Monetary Fund has expressed concerns over the re-emergence of fuel subsidy in Nigeria in the face of the country's low revenue mobilization. Now the IMF in a statement at the end of its star virtual meeting with top Nigerian officials at the close of last week through the mission expressed and also reiterated the importance of introducing market-based fuel pricing mechanism and also the need to deploy well-targeted social support to cushion any impact on the poor. Now, the mission also recommended stepping up efforts to strengthen tax administration to mobilize additional revenues and also help address priority spending pressures. It also states that tax revenues collected in Nigeria is also gradually recovering, but with fuel subsidy resurfacing, additional spending for COVID-19 vaccines added to address security challenges and much more. Looking at also the fiscal deficit of the consolidated government is also expected to remain at an elevated level of no less than 5.5% of the gross domestic product. Well, joining me now live via Skype to discuss this and much more, I have Adebowale Adeni, Senior Manager, Oil and Gas Power Unit of Anderson. Good to have you on the show today. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, let's start our conversation with this caution from the World Bank on Nigeria's fuel subsidy regime from the perspective of the delayed uh, passage of the PIB. Now, in real economic terms, this costs Nigeria a whole lot. The bigger conversation really is how important it is to have strong implementation, having the PIB also passed and looking at attention to details. Your thoughts really on how 
unsustainable the subsidy regime is. You're very correct, David. The International Monetary Fund, late last week, sounded a note of caution to the federal government of Nigeria on the rising cost incurred in subsidizing the retail price of premium motor spirits, otherwise, otherwise known as petrol in the country. The IMF advised Nigeria to take advantage of the low oil prices to remove subsidies while redirecting the savings for the provision of critical social infrastructure. Given that these subsidies are poorly targeted, the concern of the IMF is quite valid. To put some data to rates, in a study carried out in 2017, it was observed that countries in sub-Saharan Africa spent about 25% of their annual expenditure on subsidies and other government transfers. Localizing the data, um, it has been reported that Nigeria spent about 10.7 trillion naira within the last 10 years on fuel subsidies. David, the implication of this is that funds that ought to have been expended in improving our road networks, rail infrastructure, equip hospitals and build new ones is used in subsidizing petrol consumption. However, the challenge for the government is how do you remove subsidies without triggering a cost push inflation in the country? We know from practical instances that previous increases in fall prices has led to increases in transportation costs, um, food prices and consumables, and a general spike in the rate of inflation in the country, thus worsening the welfare and living standards of Nigerians. So for the government, a, method, a methodical approach must be adopted in dealing with the problem of subsidy in the country. And this will include uh, things like promoting the use of cheaper alternatives, like compressed natural gas in place of premium motor spirits, fixing government-owned refineries, and um, providing the enabling environment for private sector refineries and its associated value chain to thrive in the country. And of course, passing the PIB with favorable fiscal terms into law will also help in this regard, as it will unlock investments into the midstream and refining segment of the oil and gas sector. Okay, now we've also seen some impressive rally in oil prices. We've looked at figures uh, uh, that we've had of recent $74, $75 per barrel, but this does not necessarily translate to much due to intrinsic deficiencies we have in ground. From last year's price modulation mechanism, we now have the subsidy regime. What new twist do you think would also play out? Well, what we know is that as an import-dependent country for refined petroleum products, Nigeria is vulnerable to changes in the global price of crude. Uh, the rally that you essentially talked about in oil prices will definitely increase the landing cost of refined petroleum products. And where the subsidy regime persists, the government will expend more funds on subsidies. At over $74 per barrel of oil, and the current exchange rate of about um, 410 naira to one dollar, the landing cost of uh, petrol may be over 300 naira per liter, with the pump price fixed at 162 naira per liter. The difference will have to be borne by the government as subsidies. As I said earlier, the question on subsidy removal or continuation of subsidy is a delicate balance for the government and considerations will have to be and, con and considerations will have to be given to the pros and the cons of any future action um, for the government you know with respect to any subsidy removal in the future well we also either have to catch in now that crude oil has some relevance because in the nearest future really the conversation around cleaner energy a necessary transition across board no longer will be every conversation but reality. Do you think we are running late on this bandwagon, uh, looking at our production capacity not impressive enough and also being dampened by the reality that we don't refine or have working refineries? You're spot on, David. 
um, climate change and global warming has made energy transition a must for the world. Uh, to cut the emission of greenhouse gases to an acceptable level, various countries have made commitments on decarbonization and transition from fossil-based systems of energy production and consumption to renewable energy sources. We all know, um, we are all aware of uh, what was agreed on in Paris in 2015, where over 190 countries of the world essentially made commitments to cut um, greenhouse gases to an acceptable level. And um, David, you know that there is a global consensus that fossil fuels have destructive impact on the environment. And government at all levels must help accelerate the transition to cleaner energy. This has led to global capital allocators reducing exposure to the oil and gas sector. Another angle to this is that with the help of new technologies, more and more countries um, have discovered all deposits and um, to attract the already dwindling uh, capital for exploration and production has now become very competitive. So for us in Nigeria, the non-passage of the PIB and the attendant fiscal term uncertainty has stalled new investments across the value chain in the oil and gas sector. So time is of the essence. The National Assembly should speedily pass the PIB with favorable fiscal terms that would attract immediate investments into the Nigerian oil and gas sector. Now for subsidy removal to make some sense, like you've also mentioned, and also looking at not adding to the already tense pressure in the country, there's the need for social support. But how do we now begin to uh, develop sound economic cushions that will not only accommodate the removal of subsidy, but have long-lasting improved conditions for the average Nigerian, also energy options? We have to look at cues and models being proposed by the likes of uh, the G7, for example. Okay, well, um, in my view, the permanent and um, the sustainable solution to this subsidy issue will involve a combination of actions. Okay, and um, firstly, the country must scale up local production of refined petroleum products. Uh, this essentially means our existing refineries must be fixed and new refineries are encouraged to um, come on stream. Secondly, the power issue bedeviling the country must also be fixed, given that Nigerians currently depend on this petroleum product to self-generate their own electricity. Thirdly, the use of cheaper alternatives like compressed natural gas for transportation purposes should be widely you know, promoted. If these strategies are implemented, any removal of subsidy would not lead to a general rise in price of goods and services that may worsen the living conditions of Nigerians. So um, it has to be a coordinated response from the government um, in order to be able to tackle this problem of subsidy as we have it today. And now wrapping up our conversation, how do you also think we can begin to talk about cleaner energy and such a transitions with the current state of oil and gas infrastructure. The ruling sentiment is that the same old approach uh, to such conversations will only play out. Let's have your thoughts on alternatives we have and how we can also have a balanced and competitive base where investors will be interested in investing in Nigeria's clean energy agenda. For us to have a balanced and competitive business environment that can attract investments into cleaner energy production in Nigeria. The regulatory and fiscal framework must be very attractive to potential investors. And um, this will then mean that unlocking the gas potentials in the country and attracting investments will require the passage of the PIB. We all know that um, gas production and utilization um, is a cleaner source of energy and for investors to uh, put in their money 
in um, investment opportunities within the gas space in the country, it then means that um, the PIB, as we have it, uh, must guarantee the competitiveness of fiscal terms and um, ensure the, stabili the stability of these terms. Uh, there must be contract sanctity, license rights, and market reflective gas pricing framework. I should also add that um, the recent plan of the federal government to deliver and maintain 5 million new solar home systems under the post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan will be helpful in Nigeria's quest for energy transition. Well, thank you very much for your time on the show today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Adebo Ali, Adeni. Thank you for having me. Just before we go now, here graphic details of selected food price. Watch for the month of May, prepared by the National Bureau of Statistics. And that's it for this edition of Business Week. Many thanks for watching so far. Do have a restful weekend. Bye for now. I'm David Alabi.